Hi, my name is Joe, and this is a quick overview as to how you create your own bootable Linux USB thumb drive. We'll go ahead and we'll start here from the website lin uh, pendrivelinux.com. Since most users are probably considering trying Linux, uh, are, are probably running Windows, I'm, as you can see, I'm demonstrating this on a, a nice Windows 7 platform so that you should be able to do exactly what you see me doing and to be able to create your own Linux distribution. Now, step one before you create one is to choose which Linux distribution you would like. In my case, I'm going to choose uh, Zorin OS 7 Core 64. The reason I chose this is that for a Windows user, it's very, very easy. It's designed to look like Windows 7. Um, as a matter of fact, here I've got a button on the screen for you where I can uh, take you through a, an example of what Zorin looks like and how that operating system is installed. But here, I'll, um, this is where you get it from for our demonstration. And we go over here to, oh, here we go, get it. <laughs> and I chose the free edition. That's why we have the 64-bit uh, core. Now, this is a pretty big download. So when you, depending on the speed of your connection, this could take a little while. So as you can, um, I chose the 64-bit download. Uh, the reason is I'm uh, installing it on a computer with more than four gigs of RAM. You need to have uh, a 64-bit OS to be able to address uh, that amount of memory. If you have an older computer with four gigs of RAM or less, you can go with the 32-bit. Although these days, the, the way things are going with memory, because it's gotten very cheap and made it easier, most computers are probably going to use the 64-bit edition. Now, in order to save time, I've already downloaded uh, my uh, Zorin uh, ISO. Uh, that's the uh, little package that we use to uh, uh, package up the operating system. As you can see, the disk image is pretty big. This is 1.6 gigabytes. So it would have taken a while. And normally, I'll set these things up and let them run overnight. Uh, but this is where you would get it from. You would just click on it. Um, yeah, they say 1.5, 1.5, 1.6. It, it depends on your how big your uh, cluster sizes are. <laughs> so uh, you click on that and you download it. And once you have it, then it's time to go over here to pendrivelinux.com. We'll go ahead and we'll uh, set ours up using the universal USB installer. You can also use Yummy if you'd like, but I'll go ahead and use this one for my demonstration. We have some screenshots demonstrating how it works and some simple instructions. And then here's the little download button. Now, the nice thing about this installer is it's only about a meg. So I just click Save, and ta-da, it's already here. So as you can see, the installer has appeared, and now we can just fire it up. Now, the good thing about this installer is that it doesn't actually um, install anything on your computer. It, it runs sim completely self-contained. And, uh, yeah, it has a little license agreement, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, we don't promise that it works. After all, it's free. So here we select our Linux distribution. As you can see, the installer is set up by default to be able to handle lots of different distributions, uh, to be able to, you know, uh, pick up all the little idiosyncrasies that occur in each one. Zorin is pretty easy. Z for Zorin. Let's go all the way down. <laughs> so down at the bottom is Zorin. And now it's going to ask us, all right, where is your Zorin ISO? Because it knows that Zorin always has their files start with the name Zorin, and then it ends with ISO. So it's looking for that. Uh, as we can see, we have one that fits that criteria. So presto. Now, this is important. Uh, never check this. This is bad. <laughs> Here, the, uh, uh, the USB installer has detected which uh, drive the USB drive is in, and it only shows us that drive, which in this case is E. And I'll go ahead and say Format, Erase All the Contents. If you click this one, all the drives come open. And if you select the wrong one, well, this little thing's going to format that whichever drive you, you select. This way, I've already confirmed that E is our uh, USB drive. And sure enough, uh, that's the only one that came up. So now I just click Create. It's going to tell me all the, these actions will be performed. Are you absolutely sure? Yes. Go ahead. Format the thing. Get rid of everything. And here we go. Now everything's been extracted and the installation process is complete. And it, it took about five minutes. All right, so I'll just click close and we're now ready to reboot using our new USB key. 
Okay, so here we are. We have our USB stick that we created in our uh, demonstration on Windows 7. So I've turned off the computer that made it, and now it's time to fire the big guy up. It's going to take a little second. Oh, by the way, as it's booting here, we want to hit, um, depending on your BIOS, uh, I'm going to hit the F2 key because that's what my BIOS recognizes. And that says that I want to access the basic input-output system, and here it is. So as you can see, I'm using the Gigabyte UEFI Dual BIOS, so I can run just about anything. Um, and uh, there are lots of different options in here. You probably want to leave all of these alone. <laughs> but the important one here is that we're going to change our boot order. And uh, in, in my case, I'm just uh, overriding my boot sequence one time and choosing the uh, data stick, uh, well, uh, thumb drive that, that I've just created. So I'll tell the, uh, the computer that I want that, and I'll hit Enter. So instead of booting off of the hard drive, now I get the Zorin screen off of the USB stick we just created. Now the very first option that's uh, there by default is to boot the live system with persistently saved changes. Now that could be handy if you want to have a little roving desktop that you take with you in your pocket. That way you can use computers without uh, leaving anything on them, but be able to save, store and save documents. I'm just going to pick the second option, which is to boot the live system without saving any changes. This is useful for testing on hardware. Oh gosh, I forget how bright this is. Real computer people like to sit in the dark. Uh, that's what the glow-in-the-dark keyboard is for. That's why I've got the glow-in-the-dark mouse. Uh, so if you, if you meet someone who says that they're really into computers and they like brightly lit rooms, they're probably not really into computers as much as you think they are. Oh, and uh, real computer people like pizza. If you meet someone who says they're into computers and they don't like pizza, again, probably a poser. It's just one of those things, you know. <laughs> oh, and uh, beer. Generous amounts of beer. All right, Zorin takes a moment to fire up because we are booting off of a USB stick, so it takes a moment to uh, transfer things over USB. You know, the bus is a little on the slow side. But here we go. Zorin has fired up. It's detected uh, our basic hardware. In fact, it's already recognizing the Wi-Fi. That's what I really like about these uh, modern Linux distributions. Uh, it's just a matter of, uh, and see, I'm already able to see all the Wi-Fi devices in my neighborhood. So I can just select uh, whichever one that I'm using. Uh, I'm going to be away from the, the screen for that part. <laughs> and uh, All right, so it takes a moment to uh, connect to the Wi-Fi. In the meantime, uh, by default, when you have multiple monitors, um, everything is going to be... Um, mirrored across the desktop. So the way that you fix that is simply by going over here. I'm trying to hold the camera and do this at the same time, so please forgive me. Uh, let's see, system settings and uh, going over here to displays. By default it'll be set to mirror displays. Now there's a little bug in Zorin and I've had to find this the hard way. When you uncheck the mirror displays everything looks great, you know. Oh, okay, I've got two displays, they should be fine. Um, Let's go ahead and we'll just switch them to off because we want this to reset and detect the displays. Uh, this is very important, otherwise you, you'll be surprised this thing will hang. Now I'll fire it back up and uh, here, let's see, make sure that reset both of them. It's just a weird little bug. And now that I hit apply, keep this configuration, there we go. And now it works great. And see, now I can go back and forth, yay, I have two displays. Everything works fine. Hell, this is already better than Windows 8. <laughs> if you uh, haven't seen what multi-monitor support is like in Windows 8, you know what? Here, I'll, I'll provide you a link uh, to a video. So you'll see a button there on the screen. It's terrible. And this OS is free. Uh, this thing looks more like Windows than Windows 8 does. It's just inexcusable. All right, so uh, here, let's go to the Google Chrome which is the uh, default web browser that we have. Yeah, we'll say, go ahead and start Chrome. And ta-da, we're already on, on the internet. And so it's ready to sign in. And making a USB stick is really just that easy. So yeah, enjoy, and I hope you have fun trying out different Linux distros with your uh, USB drives.